So hi and welcome back to my channel to this brand new video. Now in this video I want to show you some news regarding building automation and in specific building automation with KNX that has happened in the last quarter of this year. Well that's a video format which I already have on my German YouTube channel the Quartals News and I thought why not also bring it to my English YouTube channel. And so therefore here you have it. So I would be really interested that after the video you give me your thoughts about this video format if it is helpful or what you think about it in general. So therefore let us start with the first update and this is regarding the EDS6 because in the last month the EDS 6.3.1 was released. As you can see this was not a major or minor release but instead simply a bug fix regarding yeah, bugs that were with shipped with the EDS 6.3. So I also don't think that it makes that much sense to show you the change log in detail. I have linked it down below in the video description. So if you had any bugs with the latest version of the EDS, so EDS 6.3.0, then maybe check out the bug fixes and then yeah, you'll see if the bug that you had was fixed. So that has happened regarding the EDS 6 in the last month. Now let's go away from the software and start with some new devices. And even if I have said that I want to show you new KNX devices, I will start with a new Meta device. Why that? Well, because the company Jung has released a new Meta switch. And this is something which I think is pretty interesting because it's pretty unusual or at the moment you don't really have that big of a choice when it comes to pure meta switches. Mostly you yeah, can only use your normal switches and then use some binary inputs or something like that. But you don't have any dedicated switches from big switch manufacturers like for example Jung. But this has now changed. So as you can see this push button sensor is battery powered so you don't need any wiring at this place so you can place the switch wherever you want and it directly connects to Meta via any smart home system that you like. So for example with Google Home, Apple HomeKit or also Samsung SmartThings and then you simply integrate it into your system and then you can yeah, use it for example in automations etc. So I think it's really interesting to see that yeah the world of Meta is now also being enriched by those professional companies that you normally see in yeah, professional building automation systems. Now besides that I want to stick with Meta but now in combination with KNX because in the last month I also released a video on my German YouTube channel. Well that's unfortunately for my English viewers. However there I showed you the newest version or the current version of the One Home server. And indeed something has changed regarding the One Home server. Just to summarize what is the One Home server? Well the One Home server is a KNX server, you may have guessed it. But the focus on this device was first of all to connect KNX to Meta. Then with the update it was also enabled vice versa so that you can connect Meta devices to the KNX world. And this was even more enriched with its own visualization, so its own app that you can use for the One Home server where you integrate KNX and also Meta devices etc. The server now also has automations and scenes and much more. So this is one thing that has happened. And the other thing is quite funny, just a week after I released my video, Meta also announced a new One Home device. This being the One Home server voice and Visu. But what exactly is the One Home voice and Visu and what are the different devices One Home offers there? Well, first of all, you have the One Home server pro. The One Home server pro has everything One Home offers you at the moment. So you have the KNX to Meta integration, Meta to KNX. You can use the One Home visualization. You can use automations. You can use the scenes and also the remote access. Now there's also the One Home IoT Gateway. The IoT Gateway on the other hand only allows you to integrate Meta to KNX and into the One Home ecosystem. 
So that means that you don't have the visualization, at least it seems on the website that that's the case. And you can't yeah, connect k and x to meta, but only the other way around. And yeah, then last but not least, you now also have the one home voice and Visu server. And now here it's basically the other way around. There you can only integrate KNX devices to Meta, use the one home visualization app, and also yeah, use automations, etc. So those are the three devices that you can get at the moment. But I would say let's stick to Meta and KNX because there was released another visualization server or another KNX visualization server that now also has the Meta integration. And this is the Haga Domobea server. Because for the Haga Domobea server there was released a new hardware. This hardware now also integrates the power supply so you can directly connect 230 volts to the Domobea server and don't need a power supply in between. Besides that, the device now also offers the meta integration so that you can export KNX yeah, data points to meta. At least this is what I saw on the website. I don't think or at least I don't yeah, read it out from the website that it works the other way around. So I think you can't integrate meta devices to KNX but only the other way around KNX to Meta. So for example, to integrate those devices to your voice command like Alexa, Siri, etc. Besides that, at least it seems like the software itself, so the visualization and also the parameterization of the server hasn't changed to the previous version. But there is still another KNX visualization that was released in the last quarter. And this is the Zenio Remote Box. And the Zenio remote box I already took a look at at the Alteva in Stuttgart. What is it? Well, basically, maybe you know the Zenio set panel series. And the Zenio set panel series, there you can get a license for to use basically the visualization of the panel also on your smartphone. And this is basically what it means with remote. So you can remotely also control the same user interface obviously cramped to the display size of your smartphone that you have on your Zenio panel. And now the Zenio remote box basically is exactly that but without the panel. So a visualization server that looks just like the Zenio set panels but you can only use it on your smartphone or in the browser on your PC. And I already have the device and tested it a little bit because there is a video planned for my German YouTube channel about it. So if you are interested about the remote box, then let me know in the comment section down below. But let us take a short look at the visualization. So here you can see how the visualization looks like. We have first of all the main page with the different rooms. And here you can see basically yeah, the different control elements that we have. So for example, RGB control, lighting, shutter, you even have schedulers included for every function or for nearly every function that you have integrated into the system. And you can integrate up to 100 functions into the remote box. Besides that, we can see that there's also a data logger, which you can use to log, for example, via yeah, temperatures like you saw here, or for an energy, energy monitor, you can also use it. So you can see it has a lot of different functions. And the interesting part about the remote books is first of all the price in Germany at some distributors the remote box costs around about 215 euros, sometimes a little bit less. And also important is to know that the device is only parameterized within the ETS so you don't need any additional software etc. Yeah and so that's basically the Zenio remote box and as the name suggests it's also possible to remotely connect to the visualization, but not to parameterize your KNX system. But we are still not done with KNX visualization servers because Jung also updated two of their visualization servers. First of all, the Jung Smart Visu server, it got an update so that you can now integrate Jung Home devices. Jung Home, what's that? Well, that's basically the yeah, retrofit solution of Jung for a smart home, which is yeah working with 
Bluetooth Mesh. So it's not a KNX system, but instead works independently with Bluetooth Mesh. And there it's now possible to connect Jung Home to the Jung Smart Visu server. And with that, you have a connection between your KNX system and the Jung Home ecosystem. So I think definitely a useful solution, especially if you maybe already have Jung Home devices and now move to a KNX system, there you can simply now use the devices that you already have had. Maybe, of course, it isn't that important for existing KNX system. So I don't think that you have an existing KNX system and want to expand it with Jung Home. But I think the other way around, there it's pretty useful. And Jung also updated their Pro server, the Jung Visu Server Pro. And it got an update so it can now include a calendar function. So you can import your calendars in an iCal format. And with that, you can then combine those calendar entries with, for example, scene calls. So when an event happens in your calendar, a KNX scene, for example, is triggered. And besides that, the server also got an update to now integrate Modbus TCP. Yeah, and what we just saw is that a lot of new devices support KNX Secure. So for example, the remote box, the Haga Domovea server now also supports Secure. So you can see KNX Secure is definitely on a rising edge. And this is also accomplished by another new device that is starting to be shipped out, which is the MDT Class Touch Smart device. This device is starting to being shipped out at least you can see it in some German KNX forums. I didn't have the chance until now to take a closer look at it in yeah, physical or also test a little bit or play around with the parameterization of the device. But this is something that I'll definitely do when I get one of those devices in my hands. If you are interested in a video about it, then again, let me know in the comment section down below. Now another new KNX device, however, with a rather specific use case is the Elsner BX8 KNX. Now it sounds a little bit cryptical, but it's basically a device that's interesting, especially for retrofitting sun shading control. Because some sun shade actuators maybe don't have an automatic functions, like for example, they only support the basic up down commands or the commands to move the blinds to a specific yeah, position, but they don't have any facade automations or something like that. And then you can use, for example, the Elsner BX8 KNX device, because this device is not a sunshade actuator, but instead a device that implements this automations into the device so that you can then connect it via group addresses to your sunshade actuator. So by that, you basically retrofit your existing sunshade actuator with those automations this device, this Elsner device then offers. So as I mentioned, definitely not a device for every KNX installation, but maybe interesting for you if you have to retrofit a KNX installation with those automations. And then there was announced another yeah, KNX device, which isn't released at the moment, but will be released in the third quarter of 2025. And this is the Gira G1, the second generation. Maybe you already know the Gira G1. The Gira G1 basically is the display for the visualization of the Gira X1. And now a second generation was announced. This second generation now has a slightly bigger screen. It has a higher resolution and better contrast, but therefore it also drops support of the standalone operation via KNX IP routing because the old KNX G1 device could also be used without an X1, just as a display, you have parameterized it via the EDS and then connected it to your KNX installation via KNX IP. However, I think this function definitely wasn't used that often. So Gira dropped this function for the second generation. At least that is what I read from the description of the new device. Bear in mind that this might change until the device is released, I don't know it yet. So this is a device that will come in the following year. And then last but not least also an update was released to the KNX integration of Home Assistant that was shipped with the Home Assistant version 2025 6.1. And there it's now possible to create cover entities via the user interface. So you can see the user interface gets more functions that can be can 
created with because until now cover entities were only be possible to be created via YAML files and now you can create it easily via the user interface so definitely more beginner friendly. By the way if you're interested more in the topic of Kanix and Home Assistant then maybe check out my other videos here on my YouTube channel or even better check out my full video course over on Udemy. I have linked it down below in the pinned comment or in the video description also with a little coupon code and also to my other video courses I have mainly my other KNX course which starts by zero all the way to advanced topics. So feel free to check the video courses out to also support the work here I do on this channel. Yeah and that's it for the quarter two 2025 update. Let me know which product or news was most interesting for you and also if this is a format which you want to see more often here on the channel or at least also for the other quarters here of the year. So if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like this video and don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any new videos. And with that I would say I see you in the next video. Bye bye.